Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cuban. In this video, I wanna take some time to help you admins out there to look and go through what you can get out of the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 Admin Center. We good? Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Also, just a quick plug, if you are a Power BI administrator or you're wanting to know more about Power BI administration, we have got a course that we are working on. It will be out soon. I've got a link down in the description below that you can sign up for to get notifications of when this course is available or more details about it. So be sure to hit that up in the description below. All right, this admin center thing. This is the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 Admin Center. It is a great way for you to manage your tenant or organization. And you may not be familiar with what's in there. If you have access, this video is really going to help you out. There's different ways to get to this. So the way that I normally do it is you're gonna wanna head over to, wait a second. Enough of all this talking. Let's head over to my laptop and take a look at this. There's multiple ways to get to the admin center. However, I'm gonna show you the two ways that I normally do this. If I'm inside of Power BI, I come up to the waffle or app picker and you'll see like this admin icon that's sitting there. You're only gonna see this admin if you are a global admin with inside of Office 365 or Microsoft 365. So within your tenant, you're a tenant global admin. If you go to portal.office.com, this will take you to a page with a bunch of icons as well. One of those is admin. So same thing applies here. You have to be a global admin for the tenant or organization. But when that's done, I can go and select that. This takes me over to admin.microsoft.com. So you could have just typed that in as well. Let's look at item number one. The first thing we're gonna look at is the actual billing area and what I have from a subscription perspective and license perspective. So we'll go over to billing over on the left. And here we're gonna start with products and services. So products and services are the items that you have inside of your organization, inside of your tenant. So these are items that are either purchased or you'll see here the first one is an E5 trial. This tenant is one I created in a different video about how do you even create a tenant organization outside of your normal work organization, right? To kick the tires. And so this is my get me some power bi on microsoft.com tenant. So I did that by signing up for the E5 trial that created the tenant. And then here we can see that E5 trial. We can also see Power BI free block. So if a user signs up for Power BI and that has to deal with viral adoption or the allow ad hoc subscription stuff, not gonna go into that in this video. That's where you get this million license block. Don't worry, you aren't paying for that. It's as a free license. This is also an example of something that's not really a subscription. It's a block of licenses. So you never pay for this item. All right, and then we also see a Power BI Pro trial. We'll come back to that. So here you can manage and see those items that are available. You can actually purchase for this trial. I could go ahead and purchase a subscription. I can assign these licenses to users. I can extend the trial if I need to. And then also I can cancel that subscription and or look at other items related to that. Now, in order to purchase a service, we can come up to purchase services and we can go ahead and for instance here, let's search for Power BI. We'll see the Power Apps items first and then we'll see Power BI items listed. So we see this free block. I can actually go and get more free licenses if I need to. Or if you disabled that viral signup or allow ad hoc subscriptions, you wouldn't have that million license block. This is where you can go and add free licenses to your organization and then assign those out. This is also where I can go and purchase Power BI Premium. And then if we scroll to the right, we can also see we can purchase Power BI Pro here. Let me switch over to another tenant because we already have this on this tenant and I will come over to, yeah, this is my second get me some Power BI items. And this tenant was created when I just created a directory inside of Azure Active Directory or with inside of the Azure portal. So here, let's go into admin. And what I can see here from a products and services perspective, I will only see Power BI free. I don't have anything else. So I don't have that E5 trial. So let's go to purchase services. I'm gonna go get me some Power BI Pro. Let's just search for Power BI, come over. Now you can sign up for the 60 day in service Power BI Pro trial as an individual. But if I wanna do this at an organization level, I can come in here, select Power BI Pro, and you'll see up above, there's a button there for get free trial. So let me go and get the free trial. Yep, try now, continue. 
All right, now that we went and grabbed that trial of Power BI Pro, let's go back to products and services. And now we will see Power BI Pro listed here and it comes with 25 licenses. I can also choose here to extend the trial for this item as well and do everything I could do before. If we go to the license block, you'll actually see the number of licenses that we have here, how many are assigned or not assigned, and just get a glimpse of what's available inside of my organization. So that can come in pretty handy. All right, moving on to number two are the actual users in the organization. So I can come down to active users under the users block, and I can actually see what users are in my organization. I can get a quick glimpse of what licenses are assigned there. And when I select a given user, there's a couple things I can do here. One is I can manage their role. And so you'll see a role here. This user is assigned to global admin. If I click on manage roles, you have options to be an administrator of different items here. So global admin, exchange item, so on and so forth. Show all by category. If I expand that, I can see even further items I can do as an administration, as an administrator. So I can see Power BI admin, also Power Platform admin. Giving the Power BI admin gives me access to the admin portal inside of Power BI, as well as using some of the admin commandlets from PowerShell, things of that nature, without having to be that global admin of the organization itself. The Power Platform admin, I'm sure there's other items that come with this, but one thing I know, it will allow you to get into the Power Platform admin center, so you can manage gateways, things of that nature, or you could have the Power BI admin role and be able to manage your gateways there as well. All right, the other thing we can do from a user perspective is I can go to licensings and apps, and I can see here that this user has Power BI free. Well, I wanna give him a Power BI Pro license as well. So I'll check that, hit save changes, and now this user has Power BI Pro as well. We can see that it was updated in the license description on the main active user list. And you can also create different views for certain items. So I could have a view just to show me the users that have a Power BI Pro license. So that could be pretty handy as well. So user area gives you a lot of flexibility dealing with users and assigning licenses, great stuff. Moving on to number three. So this area, this comes up every once in a while when I'm working with customers and they're having some trouble. So if we go to support.powerbi.com, if there's an outage of some kind or there's something going on with the service, you can go to support.powerbi.com and see what that outage or degradation is. Right now there's no issues going on, which is great. However, if it happened in the past and it's not occurring currently, there's no real history here of what happened. Enter in the admin center on the Office 365, Microsoft 365 side of the house. If I come down to show all and I come down to health, I can look at service health. And here I will see incidents that, or here I'll get a quick glimpse of the services to see what's going on. It looks like the Office 365 portal has an advisory. Power BI is green, that's great. But I can come over to history as well and I can see what's happened. By default, it's showing past seven days. I can switch that over to the last 30 days. And here there's not a whole lot of items. So let me switch over to my guy in a cube tenant. All right. And here I can see I've got access to a bunch of other services because the actual guy in the cube tenant, I've got other subscriptions and items in there. Let me go over to history. So last seven days, I can see a bunch of items here, but let me shoot it over to past 30 days, scroll down a little bit, and we will see a Power BI, uh, Power BI item. You go and click that. And here we can see details about this event or uh, advisory or outage, whatever you wanna call it. And you can get details for of like what actually happened, what resulted, and also what the root cause was. So this can be really helpful if you're trying to figure out what's going on with the service. One thing to note is there is a potential difference between support.powerbi.com and the admin center on the Office 365 side. Just because it shows up in support.powerbi.com does not necessarily mean it will show up on the Office 365 health area or what we call Office 365 comms. It depends on the level of severity of it. So if it's more of a wider outage, so for a whole data region or something like that, then it will show up in the health center inside of the Office 365 admin center. So be aware of that. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. Those were three items. What'd you think? Are those items you were aware of, you didn't know about them, or do you have some other tips that you wanna leave for some other admins? Let me know down in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. Also, just a reminder, the plug in the beginning of the admin training course that's coming, so be sure to sign up to get notified of info about that. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.